Hello and welcome to a new Google Sheets video in Practical Sheets. Today I'm going to show you how to import columns, specific columns from another file. I have a big table here and I, maybe I don't want to bring all the table, but maybe some specific columns in the order that I want. Maybe the first columns, maybe the last columns, maybe I want to choose the number one, number five, number 10, number 11 in the order I want. So I'm going to show you three ways to do it from the most complicated to the easiest one and the, the pros and cons of each one. I'm going to even show you how to also filter not only the columns, but to bring only by certain conditions. So maybe I want to bring, in this case, I have cities. Maybe I only want to bring the cities from Japan here. So I could limit what I want to bring and I don't have to bring full tables. This is without any code, just using the native Google Sheets formulas. Okay. So I hope you like it. I know you like it. But before we begin, I want to thank all of my Patreons that make these videos possible. And if you want to download the template, you can join the community of Patreons. In the description, you'll find the link. And you can ask me anything, anything related to these videos there. If not, just a like or a subscription to the YouTube channel or a comment is more than welcome. Thank you so much. So let's begin. Now I have this file has um, 11 columns and I want to import or connect these 11 columns to this other file. But maybe I don't want the 11 columns. I want only the first four, only the last four, only the four in the middle or just this one and this one and let's choose which columns I want. And alternatively, maybe I want to filter out. Maybe I don't want uh, the cities here. The, this is a database of cities from certain countries. So maybe I don't want the cities from Indonesia or South Korea or United States, whatever. OK, so maybe I want to filter only for a certain country or whatever. So this is what we're going to try to do today. And I'm going to show you several methods. Some are more efficient than others. Some may work better in some contexts or some projects than others. So let's begin. There are two ways of doing this with Google Apps Script or without Google Apps Script. Today, we're not going to touch Google Apps Script. We're just going to work with the import range function. It's a really, really nice function. Just be careful with it, especially if you have a lot of import ranges or, a, or they're very big databases, more than 30, 40,000, 50,000 rows, maybe then you may have some trouble. But if your tables are not that big, 10,000 rows or less, I think this would work great. So let's begin. The easiest way to import a um, table is by using, again, the import range function. So we start writing import and we select this import range. The first thing we need is always under quotation marks. I could take two things or just the ID that is this one from D up to edit, or you can take the entire URL. Maybe it's easier the entire URL, but it makes your formula bigger. So I don't like it. This is why I prefer to just cropping up all that is useless and only leaving this number that is the ID or the reference of this file. Okay, we close the quotation marks, we do comma, and then we're going to put as a second argument mandatory the name of the sheet and the range we want. This is A up to K and the rows, I think I did 100, if I'm not mistaken, 106. So we could do A to K from 1 to 106. So it will be in notation, in A1 notation, this is called A1 colon K 106. I close the quotation, I close the parentheses, we hit enter. The first time we're always going to have this error until we do, we click this allow access button. Okay, now we can do it. Here, be very careful because maybe it's better. Here, I only have one sheet, but maybe you have multiple. So I'm going to rename this sheet cities. And the thing about not putting the name of the sheet is that it will work. If you only have one sheet, then we don't have a problem. But if you have multiple sheets, in your file or in your worksheet, then it will take the first one it finds. So this is error prone. So I prefer to always put the name of the sheet. So before the range, we're going to put cities and then we're going to put 
the exclamation sign, okay? Even if your sheet has multiple words, for example, cities of the world, and it has spaces, don't worry, you don't have to put the single quotation marks, just write it down as it is with the spaces and everything, and it should work. Let's hit enter. And again, it continued working just fine. Okay, now let's get to what we wanted to do. So let's say we want to get only the three first columns. If we only want to get the first three columns, it's as, uh, as easy as just changing this K for C, and that's it. Or maybe I just want the from number four to number eight. So I want the country and E, F, G, and H, whatever. So you change this from E up to G, so you can be flexible with your ranges, okay? But normally, this is too easy to be true. So normally you would want some of these, then maybe the city, then the country, something like that, okay? So what can we do? The first thing we could do is to join or do multiple import ranges. For example, let's say we want the city and then we want the latitude, the longitude and the country. This first this and then these three. So one way to do it is to do multiple import ranges. So the first one will be A, colon A106. And the second one, we're going to copy this import range. We're going to paste it here. And the second one will be C, D, and E. From C1 up to E106, okay? And you could work with that. For example, maybe you want to change the order. First you want country, then you want city, then you want uh, population, J. So E, A, and then J. So we would do it like this. E, then this will be A, and then we'll copy this, and this we will change for J. Okay? This is not the most efficient way of doing it, but it's a way. Maybe we could even do a very nice thing. We could just put the column here. For example, we said E, A, and J. So up here we could do E, E, A, and J. So it's easy to uh, just change the names of the columns of the order and this would work easily. So here we would do a, a simple concatenation, just do two. It's like we have this chain and this, and then this um, string, and then this string, and we would join it with this ampersand, and we forgot the E. Let's hit enter, it should still work, but I want to replace this E for this reference. So I'm going to do separate again in another string. So quotation marks, ampersand, quotation marks, should still work. And then finally, I'm going to change this E for this reference. And it continues to work. And now if I drag it out, let me see what happened. Ah, also here, we need to do the same. So again, quotation, ampersand, quotation, and here, quotation, ampersand, quotation, and finally, we remove this and change it for this one. And let's close it, and then we, again, drag it, and it should work. And now I could play with these columns. So, for example, here I want the B, and here I want the C, and here I want the K. And you could continue to do it here. It's an error because I don't have any letters here. So again, I would need to put here the other columns because if not, this will bring an error. So let's say this will be A, A, and this B, and then I will jump the C, so this will be D, and then this will be F, and then this will be K, and then this will be L. Okay, I don't have L, so maybe let's go back to G. Okay, so this is a thing that could maybe work, but we start having too many import ranges and I don't like that. So let's call this a multiple import ranges. Okay, option number one. We're going to duplicate this. And let's see what else could we do. One thing we could do is to not have to 
have these uh, multiple formulas, we could join them all with arrays. What do I mean? That maybe instead of having here one formula, the B and one other formula, C and another formula and all that, what I could do is have one because maybe there is a case that I only want. Let's go back to how we had it at the beginning. A to K, A one to K. Now let's delete this first row. So maybe the first one I want from A up to C. Okay. But the second one, it will be G, H and I, for example, so that this is more flexible. Maybe the first input range will be three columns wide and the second one will be one and the third one will be five. But if I put them separate, like we did, in order to have less input ranges, then I would have to do the first input range here, the second one in D, the third one in F. But then if I change everything, then the D one, I will have to move it to C. I don't know if you get the idea of the, the problems of this. Let, let's do it so you can see it. I'm going to copy this and paste it here. And so the first one was from A to C. The second one will be from G up to H. Okay, so for now, this works well. But maybe in the next project or for the next report, I don't want this. I want this to be just A up to A, and the next one will be from F to G. But for this, I will need then to drag this formula down and then change this. So it's maybe it's a lot of work. C, C. And then I have these empty cells, so I don't like it that much. So a better way would be to join them in just one cell. So what I could do is, for example, let's do the same example. First, I want column A, then I want column C, then I want column from G up to H. So I could concatenate the three import ranges in the same function or in the same formula. So I'm going to copy this. And then I'm going to copy this also. And then I'm going here. I'm going to close this in these uh, brackets. Hit enter and it shouldn't change. But then I'm going to put a comma. And I'm going to paste the second one that was the C one here, C one, okay, without the equal sign. And then I'm going to do another comma inside my brackets and paste the third one that was these uh, G up to H, okay. Then I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to have an error because I need to delete all of these. And now I have it. So it's maybe a more complex formula at first sight, but it's easier because I only have one formula to rule them all. So here, if, then if I change, no, the first one will be B, well, then I change the B here. And the second one will be A, then I change A. And the third one will be from E to F, then I change it here, okay? So this is a much nicer way of doing it. I don't need to do an input range for each column, but I could play with it. Still is not the best because I need to always come here and change my formula, but it's nicer because I only have to change it in one place. Okay, let's hit enter. And let's call this multiple. I are better. <laughs> okay. Now, always my idea is that I have to do the less import ranges I can, the better. So it would be better if I try to do one import range and in that import range, then select the columns. So I will go to the easiest way. Maybe I could have started that way, but it's much more easier to do. I'm going to do only one input range. A up to K. And I'm going to select the columns I want. How? I need a great function, one of the best functions there are in Google Sheets called query. So what query will do is Query, query is a really flexible function. It can do a lot of things. But in this case, what we wanted to do is to select the columns we want and the order in which we want. For now, let's say we want everything. So we're just going to say select star in our second argument. We're going to close. And it's like I haven't done anything. But then I could start playing with this star argument and just with the number of the columns. Let's say we want the city. And then we want 
the country here E, and then we want uh, the this code of the country G. So A, E, and G. However, be very careful because query when I put the import range as an argument won't accept the column name. I need the column number. So there are many ways of getting it when you have very big tables, but for these ones it's just as easy as counting. So this will be column number one, this will be column number five, and this will be column number seven. So you'll just have to always put it like this, exactly like this. Uppercase C, O, L as in column, in lowercase, and then immediately you put the number of the column, one, comma, then the second one, C, O, L, first upper, the, the other two lower, always you have to write it like this, then you put five, and finally, call seven. Okay, we hit enter, and that's it. Much, much easier, but it's nice to know that the other ones are available. Actually, I'm going to copy it, and let's go back, because I liked it. Okay, here we're going to call this query. Okay, perfect. And that's it. You could order it in any way you want also. You could say that first we're going to with the number of the country, with the name of the country, then with the code, and then with the name of the city. It's very easy. You could even, when you have numbers, when you have dates, you could even do some basic calculations. It's a very nice formula, this query. And you can see that it's much, much nicer, much, much cleaner than the other ones we've done. And the other bonus is that you can filter also. Let's say we want to filter by Japan. So I don't want to get too much into this because it's not the objective of the video, but let's say we want that the country is Japan. So in the same query, we're just going to say where column, the country is column five. So where column five equals in single quotation, Japan. Let's close it, hit enter and you only get Japan. And let's say you want to order the city from uh, in alphabetical order. So you just use another clause. Again, I'm, I know I'm putting a lot of concepts here, but there are videos on the order by, on the select clause in the very, very little seen videos in my channel about this query formula, okay? Order by, and again, call, call this will be call one by the city, ascending order. That's it. So this query function is really, really powerful. Okay. So this is what I want to show you how without code, just using import range and a couple of auxiliary formulas, you could choose which columns to bring from a big table. And you could even choose which rows to bring or filter by some conditions like I showed you at the end. Okay. This is it. I hope you liked it. And as always, if you want to download the template of these and more than a hundred videos that I have in the channel, just go to the Patreon page. You can subscribe there and you can support me then. You can uh, ask me questions there. It's not that you cannot ask me questions in the channel. You can also comment there, but sometimes I uh, it, it takes a bit longer for me to answer. The support of the Patreons is awesome and is the reason I can continue doing this video. So thank you so much. And... See you next time.